morning, afternoon, or time of day of choice, depending on your location. Welcome to the Lyric Professors. I am Professor A. Behind me and below me is Professor Dogger, who is a scenting something, I believe. And on the other side of the world is Professor J. How are things on the other side of the world? Hotting up. Hotting up, my professorial friend. Oh dear. It's hotter every day. The air conditioner's on. <clears throat> yeah, I've got my fan on. My trusty tower fan. What's the latest cap, Professor A? Oh, this cap is, in fact, adventures. a cap I wore two episodes ago, because I was going to put on the latest cap and then couldn't get it to fit on my big fat head. So <laughs> I have no reach Which for one's this it? one. It's the symbol of the long dock. Ah, yes, of course. Of course. And their long docks. My favourite area of your France. You know, they speak a funny language there. Occitane, yes. Yes. It's the long, long... The Oc, long tongue the Oc, of the Oc, presumably means west, doesn't it? As in occidental, the opposite of orient. Essentially, essentially, mm. Occitani. Yeah, and, and this has been linguistics with the lyrics professors. <laughs> <clears throat> French well, linguistics. It's, it's appropriate, right? Well, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. When, yeah. Are we, when are we going to do a French song? <laughs> I did think about picking one. There's one which I have said to you for. The last 20 years that I really like by kind of a French boy band. Um, try, well, kind of. Boy I, band. I, mean, they have, I don't remember this. They play <laughs> instruments and things, but I'm not going to name it now because I might well pick it soon. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And obviously you're entitled to pick a French song whenever you want. Um, okay. Not right now. Yeah, so. so today. We have a song. Oh, we had a French translation of Total Eclipse of the Heart, right? We did, yes. Yes. Um, today, we are not doing that. We are doing a video. It's one of our video episodes. And we are talking about the video for the song The Space In Between, which I always thought was The Spaces In Between, which isn't, uh, by a band called How To Destroy Angels. What do you know about them, Professor Joe? Well, I knew nothing about them before, before this. Um, but now I understand it's Trent, Trent Reznor and yes. his uh, and his wife. Um, she's a singer. She is. And when I researched that, it all made sense because it really does sound like a Nine Inch Nails track. It's got that very heavy industrial bass sound, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So the band is uh, Trent Reznor and his wife. I don't know if it's Mary Queen or Mary Queen Mandig. Um, who you can see in a slightly deceased state at the bottom right of the screen. And uh, Atticus Ross, also from Nine Inch Nails and a long-time collaborator with Trent Reznor on film soundtracks. Um, I believe they got an Oscar for the soundtrack to that one about Facebook. Um, what's it called? The Social Network, I think. And they've also done um, their first... Uh, soundtrack, I believe, was the American remake of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, in which they did a yeah. really cool kind of Nine Inch Nails style remake of um, Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin, which I really like. And they also, on that soundtrack, was a track by How to Destroy Angels called um, Is Your Love Strong Enough, which was a Brian Ferry cover. Indeed, still is. Wow. Yes, so um, live, they did one tour, and they were joined live by Alessandro Cortini, who I believe has done plenty of things with Nine Inch Nails before as well. Yeah. Um, so, yes. You've seen uh, the Nine Inch Nails play, haven't you? I saw them. One of their very first uh, UK gigs, yes, um, and oh. a very big one. Um, starting off in style, they played Wembley Stadium. Um, wow. Well, they were the support act, um, the opening act. This was uh, Guns N' Roses, um, their epic tour, and they were supported by Skid Row, who were terrible, and Nine Inch Nails, who were awesome. And oh. This was um, after their, just after their first album, Pretty Hate Machine, so it's a uh, the old stuff. Um, I thought they were the best band of the night. Um, That's kind of their quintessential album, right? Pretty Hate Machine? Well, I mean, it's the one people know, because it's got Head Like a Hole on it. Yeah, I mean, that's a banger. But then there's so lots of other things they've done. And 
Okay. Entire catalogue is fantastic, in my opinion. I originally wanted us to sort of sound vaguely like Nine Inch Nails when we started making music. <clears throat> we, yeah, okay. Well, we still could. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing I've done in my solos, as you call them, yeah. synth wave projects. I'm not sure I call it synth. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, uh, well. Um, so, yeah, who knows? Anyway, where were we? We were just talking about. Uh... Trent, Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor, yes, uh, Trent. Okay. Do, you know where... Trent. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to destroy angels got its name? I believe it's named after a song by another band called Coil, yeah, who I good. feel I should probably have listened to but never heard. Um, I mean, so they're an experimental music group formed in 1982 and dissolved in 2005. So they've been around a long time. Yeah. Um, they have been called, they've also been known as the Black Light District, LPH, Time Machines, Sickness of Snakes, and the Eschaton. Um, okay. Coyle's work explores themes related to the occult, sexuality, alchemy, and drugs. Um, snakes and vicars, basically. <laughs> yeah, gothic rock, neo folk, which I'm quite interested to yeah. hear about. Dark ambient. Um, and the one bit I really liked was um, Coyle involved into a full-time project with the addition of his partner and psychic TV bandmate, Peter Christopher. Peter Christopherson, um, who was formerly of pioneering industrial music group Throbbing Gristle. Oh, I've heard of them. <laughs> I've heard of them, yeah. 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 Cracking. Yeah, they've so, got some. Uh, they've got all the names. Yeah, yeah, all just, the just, names. <laughs> um, How to Destroy Angels was a short-lived project, unfortunately. Um, they uh, released two EPs and one album, and then Mary Queen, Mary Queen went off to have kids. Um, I believe she and Trent have five since this exactly came out. So, full-time job, pretty much. Um, which is sad because I'd like to. I'd like to hear another album. <laughs> And this this song was the first uh, release um, it's from the initial EP, which is called How to Destroy Angels. Um, it's strange because some places it's, it's referred to as a single and some places it's referred to as not being one of their singles, despite the fact there's a video for it. So I don't know whether this was just released as a video on your YouTubes and things or whether it was a, mm. an actual proper single. They must have spent I mean, quite I, a bit on the video, so I expect it probably would have been racist. Um, yeah, so um, we can talk about the video. We can talk. About let's talk about the video. The lyrics. I mean, let's 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 go for it. Let's do the let's do the video. Right. Well, I personally, I I, I was obviously you know I like to do stupid twenty minute monologues about things in videos, <laughs> um, but I found there's no need because um, the lovely people on. Uh, Nin.wiki have done it for me. So I'm just going to read out what they said, basically, because I'm very <laughs> lazy. Um, right, so here is the video recap supplied by uh, a contributor on www.nin.wiki, which I have to say is the best wiki I've ever seen for information contained. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much. And this is just, you know, a minor throwaway song, which isn't actually by the band the wiki's about right. nin.wiki yes um anyway so this is a uh, the recap this video directed by rupert sanders who is primarily known for creating video game advertisements is set in a hotel room <clears throat> and opens on the corridor outside it cuts to a shot of a, a jar door and of an overrunning sink to show that something surprising has happened in the room and diverse attention from whatever was happening before. Uh, once the vocals come in, we are given a shot of a recently murdered, albeit singing, bride, <laughs> which is Mary Queen, sitting against a bed, surrounded with blood. Following close-up shots show that a struggle had occurred and show a long burning candle near a stack of papers. A shot of another unmoving dead body, that of the groom, which is Trent Reznor, is in a pool of his own blood. We're then shown a woman, who is apparently Molly McDowell, speaking on the phone, and a man, Atticus Ross of 
the band member, watching motorbike racing on the hotel's television. The pair are totally oblivious to the scene beside them, despite the carnage. The video shows the weapons beside both the bride and the groom, her glass, her broken glass and a knife, respectively, to convey to the viewer that they killed each other. I disagree with this, but we'll come back to that. The video cuts to show the candle has ignited the stack of papers and gives us a close-up of the murdered man's face. The remainder of the video shows a spread of the fire engulfing the corpses in their half of the room and the apparent nonchalance of the supposed murderers. So they can't agree in this recap of who murdered them, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, the video also reveals that there is apparently another man in the bathroom, but only his feet and hands are ever seen. The video cuts out abruptly as the bride and groom are totally consumed by the fire. So it's a horror movie, basically. Um, it isn't. It's, uh, if you look on the, uh, the wiki, as I've mentioned, there's lots of screenshots of the video and screenshots of making of the video and that kind of thing. Um, and you can see how stylized it is. Um, let's talk about... Scrolly, 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 scrolly. Um, <clears throat> talk about the music, just to um, ground it in how it goes. Uh, it opens with a loop drum beat, ambient and delayed guitars enter, followed by a deep, deep synth string bass line and a softly sung verse. The chorus features more guitars layered on top of the differing bass line and harmonized vocals followed by a second verse characterized by echoing Swarmatron manipulations. Madam. <clears throat> Even more guitars enter for the final chorus, which builds its harmonies as it repeats twice, matching the building layers of guitars. The entirety of the song cuts off suddenly at the end of the second chorus repetition. So it's, uh, it's very intense and it builds from the start. Um, it's wild. It is. <laughs> it is. I mean, this video is terrifying it is it is absolutely horrific to watch <laughs> it is a bit yeah it's it's so gory deathy she's singing there like she's clearly dead but singing and then yeah on fire I and mean, she's either the world's best <laughs> actress um or they've superimposed some never closing eyes on top of her eyes <clears throat> in the video sure Mm. You think he's probably more likely. She never blinks at all while she's singing. She's dead, so she can't blink. Can't sing, apparently. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I had so much to say about this, and I can't find it. Oh, never mind, as usual. Uh, the director, Rupert Sanders, said that this video is a metaphor for how neglect can allow love to die, symbolized by the self destruction of the married couple, totally ignored by the pair opposite can also be seen as a partial rebuke towards much of the negative response that Mary Queen and Trent Reznor received after their engagement was made public, a reminder that everyone is human and everyone can be hurt. Um, so he's saying, self-destruction, so he's saying they murdered each other, the director. I don't think so, having watched it. I think it's fairly obvious that the two people in the room have murdered them and then put weapons next to their hands to make it look like they've done it to each other. Um, yeah. But there is Definitely. some debate about that. So, um, he notes they, uh, it was a prop hotel room, it's not a real one, they built one um, All right. specifically so they could burn it down. <clears throat> and they, uh, I mean, they, they certainly did that. Yes, they really did. Really... Yes, it's a proper fire. They burnt that mofo down. Yeah, and the footage of um, the two actors, actors, musicians, is. Uh, digitally composited with footage of mannequin standings burning, right. which is nice to know. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole room is eventually burned down. Yeah. And this is a nice little quote from a composite, a composite of Mary Queen singing and additional digital fire effects were added for the final shot. To add gruesome detail to the shots of her burning, effects artists composited in images of charred flesh, diseased skin, and even chicken meat. I say. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is horrific. <laughs> I think it's very striking and it's uh it is striking. Uh, Strikingly horrific. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should we look at the lyrics, Professor? Yeah, let's do that. 
Look at the old lyrics there. Not that many of them, to be honest. It's not going to take us very long, is it? No. <laughs> okay. All right. All the blood lying on the floor. Sense the crowd expecting something more. Opened up, proudly on display, what we tried so hard to hide away. Yeah, it's actually all our blood, so I think it's talking about, as we said, there was a very negative reaction when their engagement was announced, because uh, Trent had lots of groupies, put it that way. Um, lots so, of yeah, I was going to ask, what, 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 why, why, what, why negative? Why, why because like he was negative? going off the market and um, all these crazy women on the internet so we were very upset about it. I mean, that can't count for the majority of his fans, right? It can't just be the groupies. Well, there it? was massive backlash online about it. Okay. So who knows? Apparently she's a gold digger. Okay. Yes, um, so opened up proudly on display. We've announced their engagement. We're really happy about it. And, uh, Blood's lying on the floor because the crowd were expecting something better than what the talk turned out. Right. In 2009, they announced their engagement. Because so, yes. she was a singer in another band that I should have noted down, but I forgot. Um, so it wasn't just that they got together and he's like, I want to sing on my album. She was actually a singer before her. That's the uh, Los Angeles based rock band, West Indian Girl. Ah. <laughs> So she was in that band for five years. Mm. She did in Playboy magazine, magazine, mm. and then they got together. Yeah, old Trenty boy off the market. Terrible. Oh, oh. another man down. <laughs> so chorus, chorus, chorus. Blinding light illuminates the scene. Trying to fill the spaces in between. So uh, obviously he was uh, legally required to include a reference to that weekend song, <laughs> even before it was written. <clears throat> <laughs> Every song has to have a reference to that weekend, did not it? It's Absolutely. So um, yes. So uh, blinding light. Um, it's been suggested this is paparazzi following every move. I think personally, in the context of the video, it's more likely to be a crime scene photographer. Taking photographs when it's over. Right. But, uh, but then who knows whether the video concept was around when the lyrics were written. So. Yeah. Could be either. Um, people have also suggested the space in between could be limbo, <coughs> state between life and death. Um, so. Okay. People dying as they are in the video. Having died. Yes. Okay. Yes. Space in between. I thought it was kind of um I mean maybe it's just my science mind. I was kind of thinking of the space in between atoms or something like that. Could be. I don't know where the science yeah. figures heavily in his sons on that. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Dogger? Got a tail wagging, or she did have. Got a squeak on. Um and I think, yeah, as I said, I thought the song was called Spaces in Between, so I really looked at it, because she does say space is not space, so it's a bit strange. Right, okay. A bit strange, don't know why Why it's singular in the title. Yeah. All right, my words is, arms entwined in a final pose, narrative drawing to a close, still remain the things we couldn't kill. In your eyes, I can see it still. So narrative joy to a close it's the end that sounds like a death, end. a death reference to me um, people have said it's a marriage reference not sure about that. Yeah. Um, still remains things we couldn't kill i guess that's a speaks to the limbo theory yeah between life and death you, you know dogger do you know everything? Pity she's not speaking a language we understand. Right? Uh, <laughs> okay, come on. Good. You settle down. All right. Yeah. Oh, words. Um, 
how we choose the framing of the scene. Hate begins to spill across the scene. Blinding light illuminates the scene, trying to fill the spaces in between. It's hate begins to spill across the screen, which I believe is referring to the feedback they got when they announced that. Yeah. Engagement. Um, they yeah, tried. Really, I mean, the lyrics really do reflect that yeah. clearly, don't they? Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what it's actually about. But, um, yeah. Ah. The director thinks it's about bloody murder and burning corpses. <laughs> that's good. Anyway, that's, yeah. that's probably completely put you up. It is a fantastic bit of music. Uh, it's, it's not <laughs> my favourite song by them, I have to say. There was another. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it was the second song or if it was actually the first. No, it was the first song that was released. This is the second. So, and the first one is called A Drowning. Uh, so it's, okay. it's cheerful. Um, and it's uh, about eight minutes long, mostly piano led with ripping guitar solo at the end. It's been covered by people, including Enya. There we go. Oh, wow, okay. And that is a brilliant song. I love that song to death, but it doesn't have a video. So. Um, yeah, so. Okay. Also, um, as Trent Reznor did at the time, the multi tracks for this song and some others were released free on their website so people could make their own remixes. Um, I saw that. Unfortunately, they don't exist. Any. The no, no. The, uh, the website doesn't exist anymore. What no. does the Wayback Machine Could well do, it? yeah. Um, that'd be interesting. Yeah, a couple of bands are doing that. At the time. Garbage did something similar as well. So you could do a mashup. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, yeah it's, I'm sure there's an archive of it somewhere. Some will have saved it, won't they? Yeah. That's what I'd say. Yeah. So, that's there you go. That's about all there is to this. It's just a short video episode. Um, I would recommend people have a listen to this band if you like dramatic music, but in a minimal kind of way, usually. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you like a word count? I would love it. Let's have a wordy. It is time for Professor J's word count. Wordy, wordy, woo. Do you want to take a guess? <sighs> okay, hold on. Well, it's about uh, 110 total with 62 unique. So it's 60 total, very close. We're actually 91 wow. total. Sorry, 60 unique and 91 total. Yeah, sure. Um, it's one of the shortest songs we've done, but but a very high ratio of uniqueness in it. In fact, I will say, he says, looking at his definitive list. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, uh, no, we don't. I was going to say we have a winner. We have a silver medal winner. <laughs> well, that's the shortest we did. Uh, among the leaves, Sun Kill Moon. Right. 69%, this is 66%. Fresh Blood was 65% or 65 ratio. Is that percent? Let's say percent. Yeah. Mm. Ali, should we do a PAL score? Sure, why not? Uh, PAL scores are obviously only on lyrics, so they're pretty useless for a video episode, to be fair. <laughs> um, obviously, Blinding Light is in there, so that's got to be a point. <laughs> I don't know, it's all right, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's obviously right. written for a specific purpose, which is to get yep. people who will not yep. them and announce their engagement. So uh, it does what it says on the tin. Three. Okay. Yeah. Sounds arbitrary enough for me. Yeah, I think so. What our average PAL score is? Well, of course, we still haven't finished. Um, well, of the ones we've done, it's 3.4 is the average PAL score. Including the minus one. <laughs> oh, hang on. This is ruined by a, a six star. Why have we got a six star for MacArthur Park? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, 3.46. Um, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. All right. It's all right. Good choice. Scary video. Yeah. Song's right. Have a listen to it, Ravni. It's great. Okay, I will do. I also want to listen to the original Coil experimental yes. neo folk. I'm interested in listening to that. 
would it still be Neo if it's old? <laughs> That's, yeah. Is modernism still modernism? Yeah, is it just folk now? No. Yeah. Yep, so there we go. Yes, do you have a quiz or anything? I've got a an interesting article that oh, I nice. uh, spotted recently on the pro- subject of Professor Dogger. Really? Professor Dogger, prick up your ears. Oh, they are pricked up. Um, have you heard of the Svalin? I have, because I saw that newspaper. Is it the Guardian? Yeah. It is the Guardian. Yeah, I guess kind of like, yeah, go for it. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. The Svalin. So uh, it, it's a... Um, Svalin is actually a Nordic word. Um, it's a shield that protected the world. Yeah. So, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. You're on there and all that. Um, so, actually, it's the new cool dogs for billionaires to have. It's some sort of crazy friendly dog that's super aggressive. Um, yes. And it's an undisclosed mix of Belgian Malinois, like uh, Professor Dogger there. Yeah. German Shepherd and Dutch Shepherd. I know nothing about Dutch Shepherds, I have to say. <laughs> I've owned German Shepherds, and this is my first, probably last man in a while. Um, not because she's lovely, because I'm getting old and she's strong and hard work. She is very strong. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. um, go on. I'm not going to trade you. Yeah, the, the thing I liked in the article was um, they've called it Svalin because how can you. You know, you have like the if you if you mix a cocker spaniel with a poodle, oh. you call it a cockapoo. Um, so a portmanteau for a Dutch Shepherd, German Shepherd, and Belgian Malinois could be a Dugger Shubermal. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty yeah. better than Sven. I mean, so yeah, so friendly and fierce. Um, they have to be extensively trained. Become a beast that could rip out an attacker's trackie. Yet also function as a pet. To be fair, um, Professor Dogger could do that anyway. You don't need absolutely she could. Yeah. It's like um, um, according to one over, owner, it's like having a gentle Navy Seal in the house. <laughs> if that's what floats yeah. your boat. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, um, what's the point of a dog you can't play with? Well, you can. Apparently, you instruct them it's playtime, and then you end the fun by using the command "It's over." Back to your place. <laughs> Oh, she's not having that. <laughs> she <doesn't like> that. <laughs> that would be a great lyric in a song, actually. Like that. Yeah. That ridiculous. You made her think someone's going to break in and need a trackie. It's over. It's, it's over. over. Back to your place. Back to your place. Yeah, she's not a secret spelling. No, sorry. Go on. Um, Go on. And how much do they cost, Professor Joe? Um, they cost 150,000 US dollars, which is 117,000 great lot. British pounds. A, a Malinois here, puppy, or whatever, goes for up to 16,000. So. Gee whiz. Obviously, I, I adopted Professor Dodd, Wow. So I didn't play that. Wow. That's another reason why she's probably my last Malinois. <clears throat> wow, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. That's my yeah. my doggy facts. Yeah, I think it's also awesome. the picture of the dog looks just like her. To be honest, it does. It's a yeah. Dog lying well, across a, a tire, looking directly into the camera. All sort of blackish in the snout. Yeah, but the eyes are the same. Yeah, I, I would definitely think that the Malinois will be the major part. Yeah, that. I've had German shepherds, and they're lovely, and they have in the past been great army and police dogs, but they're being phased out for Malinois here, at least in the army and police. Right. Because um, they've just got too many problems bred into them, thanks to, you know, Prufts and the Kennel Club and the Kennel Club of America, and you get these silly German shepherds with slopey backs and things, because that was fashionable, which is terrible for their hips. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. And they're prone to eye problems, heart problems. So I doubt there's much German shepherd in there, to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, just, just anyway, she only does like twenty a year or something. Which at least Valens. exactly twenty a year. So it's just yeah. the, two, the cool two million dollars. Exactly. 
Yeah, agile, athletic, even-tempered, gentle, intelligent, loving, and well-muscled. <laughs> guns, you know. Good guns. Good dog guns. <laughs> yeah, I think it's over. Back to your place would would work well in that silly little music thing I sent to you. Yesterday. Yes, yes, I need to look at. But obviously, I'm away for a, a family ashes scattering from tomorrow. So not this yet. when I get back, certainly we need to. Look into that, and the, have we ever officially announced our G to the Z song? Because we never used the video we made. Well, we haven't finished the song, that's why. <laughs> well, true, but we never, we didn't upload the video we recorded of trying well, to. Well, I, we we I thought we were going to wait until we finished the song, okay. and we thought we'd finish it a long time before now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, we wrote a song. Yeah. In, we wrote a song. in the style of the cult, because we were. Style of the it's a cult thing. It's about zombies and girls. It's some woo yeah, isn't it? It's great. <laughs> oh, woo yes. Do you want to keep in the uh, my annotations? I think they're brilliant. Yes. The chorus, you bit. I must point out this is somewhat of a joke song. We do do proper songs too, very very occasion. Anyway. I I think it's a good song. I think it's a banger. I've been listening to it. I think it. it is, but the lyrics are a bit of a cult joke. Yeah. They are. We shall <clears throat> we shall do a, a review of those lyrics one day. I'm interested to see what the pal score would be. For <laughs> well, it's one. arbitrary, so if we've done it, it's got to be at least 20. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think we spun this one out as much as we could. It's probably our shortest <laughs> yeah. episode ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... Um... <laughs> Give us a like, give us a ring on the bell, give us a subscription, a woo, yeah. comment, <laughs> uh, buy us as Fallon. That'd be nice. <laughs> so, farewell, peeps. Whoa.